everybody. So we've got a fantastic video for you today because we are looking at one of the most iconic vehicles ever made, the Land Cruiser, and one of the best versions of the Land Cruiser, the 80 series, but not just any series, the man, the owner, the legend behind this vehicle, Logan. Thanks for coming by, buddy. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So this is your Land Cruiser. Tell me a little bit about it. What year is it? So this is a 1992 Land Cruiser 80 series, and uh, it's the diesel version. It's got pretty much every single feature that you could possibly want, uh, from heated seats to a refrigerator and ice maker inside, wow. factory winch, front and rear lockers, the works. So these vehicles were sold in the US primarily in the 1990s, um, and they never were offered with a diesel engine. Correct. So how did you find with the diesel? Where did this come from? So I got it at an auction in Japan, shout out to Pacific Coast Auto. Yeah and uh, just went through the process. You know, importing it is, I think, the legwork that a lot of people don't know how or don't want to do. Right. You have to get customs broker, you have to get uh, shipping, you gotta figure out all that kind of stuff. So most people, when they import a vehicle, they'll go through like a dealer based here in the US. Mm -hmm. Did you do that or did you actually go through the process of filling out all the paperwork and all the EPA docs and that kind of thing? Um, I got a broker to do all the, the hard work. Okay. And uh, just paid them to do that hard part, yeah. Very the, cool. All the paperwork was pretty much filled out when I got it. So how'd you find this vehicle? Where, where'd it come from? Um, there was a, I think it's called USS Tokyo is the actual um, auction mm -hmm. there in Japan. And I got it through Pacific Coast Auto. Yeah. And um, so you kind of pay them and you get access to all the auctions. And there's a, you know, it was, it was probably like a three year process to get to the point where I bought a couple of these. Wow, unreal. Well, let's pop the hood. Let's talk about sure. the diesel engine. So um, here in the US, we had the FJ80 and the FZJ80. And then abroad, they had this diesel engine. And talk me through this engine, what are we looking at? So this is a 4.2 liter, straight six. Um, it's got about 165 horsepower stock and 265 torque. Um, turbo diesel, obviously non-intercooled. Yeah. It's got uh, the dual battery setup. Um, yeah. Now, does this keep up with modern traffic pretty well? Easily. Yeah. Yeah, it'll it'll do 75, 80 on the highway. I actually, I work in Thornton yeah. and drive I-25 occasionally when I take this and it does excellent, even in the mountains. And, and um, I mean, in terms of parts and reliability, how, how solid are these engines? These are extremely solid. Yeah. Um, so every part on this is exact same as the 80 series that we got here, minus the engine. So it has all the same axles, transmission, everything. Okay, interesting. So it's a four speed auto. Yes. So when you're doing like 70, 75 miles an hour, do you know how fast the engine's spinning? Um, I think it's sitting around uh, 25, oh. 25, 2700. Okay, that's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty decent. Very, it's about very 20 cool. on the highway. So I see up front here, you've got this little panel here that says electric winch. Yes. Is that a factory thing? Is that a... Uh... That is a factory option in Japan. Wow. Unreal. And there's actually behind that panel, there's actually a, an integrated winch into the front bumper. Correct. You can even see up underneath, uh, you can actually see it. Wow, I've dude. never personally used it. <laughs> That's gorgeous. So this thing seems to be in abnormally good condition. Was it like this when you found it? Talk me through how'd you get it to the state? Yeah. So. It was actually in this state when I bought it from the auction. It had been completely overhauled by mm -hmm. the previous owner. Um, I don't know much about that other than uh, the pictures and some of the receipts that I had. Um, so they spent about 23,000 US dollars to completely revamp the entire thing, including rebuilding the engine. Wow, okay, so it's been fully gone through. Yes. Now, when you brought it over here, um, if, if someone wanted to get this registered, I mean, does it have a USA title? Does it have a Colorado title? Yes, it has a clean Colorado title. Okay, very, very cool. Um, and I noticed that the wheels look a little little, little different than stock. <laughs> yeah, so these are the wheels off of the TRD Pro 4Runner. Um, and the tires are actually from a Jeep Gladiator. Oh, no dirt. way. Yeah. Did they bolt right up or did you have to do any adaption to the... They bolt right up, yep. Even the way that it kind of fits around the hub. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Looks like it was meant to be. Dude, that is super cool. Um, so let's do this. Case, you want to go to the passenger side and we'll have Logan kind of talk us through some of the stuff on the inside. Sure. Now, um, first thing I noticed, obviously the right-hand drive thing. Does that take some getting used to here in the <laughs> States? Uh, you know, it's funny. If you drive cars a lot, like if you're a car guy like us, Yeah. It doesn't take a lot. I think the hardest thing for me to overcome was the blinkers that are on the right side mm -hmm. here and uh, the shifter on the left and of course the mirrors and everything. You start to look to your right when there's nothing there. So. Yeah, super cool. So um, does this thing have the lockers, front and rear lockers? It does, wow. it does. We got the switch over here, got the front and rear lockers. Unreal. So full time four wheel drive, yes. high and low range and you've got full lockers too. Indeed, and uh, the heated seats here. 
Dude, heated seats. For Look a 92. Wow, is this, a, is this an ice box in the middle? It is. Dude, that is cool. I actually have a cold drink in there if you want to look in. It's pretty deep. Um, so you've got off, cool, and ice. Does ice actually make ice? It does. I haven't done it myself, but I have seen uh, videos of people doing that, and it works fine. Everything works. So some of the things I'm noticing in here, which is really cool, um, automatic climate control, right? Yes. Which is really, really advanced. Heated seats, adaptive suspension, normal in sport mode. Yep. Wow, unreal. No airbag though, huh? No airbag, 92. 92, free <laughs> yep. airbag. And then the dash is beautiful too. Um, yeah. How does this thing do on like longer trips? Is it pretty comfortable? Yeah, you know, I've only taken it, I took it to, um, from like around the Loveland area up into the mountains and, and back through Nederland and down through Boulder and everything. Yeah. It does great on the highway. Um, it's very, very comfortable. What's the little red button do by the, the mysterious red oh, button? Oh, that's actually for, um, if you're trying to take out any of the plastics, yeah. um, this allows you to move it without it being on to move the shifter. Oh, out no part. way. Yeah. Unreal. So does everything work? Everything works. Wow. That's super cool. Starts right up. Super cool. Does it have glow plugs? Do you have to let it glow before you start? Um, it'll, it has the, the same little thing, yes. Uh, so if I were to put that on, it comes on for just a second. Uh, I had it through the really bitterly cold winter we just had here in Colorado. Right. So negative 20, 25, and it's never had any problems. Oh, wow. First crank. Yeah, it just bumps it. It's pretty quiet, too. Mm -hmm. You know, compared to like a lot of diesels from the 80s and 90s that are super clattery. Mm -hmm. that's, that's surprisingly, uh, yeah, super, super nice, dude. Wow. All right, let's check out the back seat. Sure. So... Um, full five-seater, yes. and then do you have the two in the back too? No, oh, no this one, I, a lot of the, I think the 80 series, and I don't know for sure, but the, the Japanese 80 series, I don't believe many of them came with the third row. Oh, interesting. I think that was a U.S. option. I love the, like, the two-toe velour. <laughs> yeah. That's super cool. I have the shag carpet floor mats. Yeah, these are the front floor mats that I moved back here. Okay. And then I've got, it's got the one for the back as well. So are these getting pretty hard to find like on the auctions in Japan? In this condition, yes. Yeah. Um, the ones that I've seen, which is why it took me so long for this one, is uh, they're either rusty or just beat up. You know, they don't really, have, a lot of them are in decent condition, but then the interior is, is messed up or they've been highly modified. Gotcha. So. so there's even a pretty big aftermarket community in Japan. I yeah. think so. Look at the, um, in case you want to get a shot of that, look at the inclinometer and the, or sorry, the compass and the altimeter there. Mm -hmm. Wow, dude, that is just so cool. And another thing that we did not get here in the States yeah. was the rear tire carrier. Oh, that's factory. So this is factory. Wow. Um, a lot of people asked me about it at a uh, Land Cruiser swap meet, and they were like, hey, how do you bolt this on? Well, you should never bolt these on um, because there's a reinforcement underneath that comes from the factory that way. Wow. Uh, can you open up the trunk? Let's sure. see what the trunk looks like. Yeah, it's in pretty good condition as well. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. Yeah, you got the, the original carpeting. Mm -hmm. You got the bar on the window too. Yeah, so and this one, the 80 series in the United States had the sliding windows mm -hmm. and the, these do not. Um, this is, I think, where the factory winch cable is. That's so cool. Pull that out there. Dude, look at that. I've got a buddy in the um, Land Cruiser Museum that has oh, uh, yeah. Uh, a 70 series that that then they got an exemption to import. I think it's a 2015 2016 that oh, has wow. a winch and the winch controller is exactly the same. <laughs> they funny. haven't changed it since that's the 90s. Toyota for you. Dude, that nope. is super cool. So have you had to do anything to it since you brought it over? Um, change the oil? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was a little worried about that at first. Just kind of wondering, am I going to have to find some kind of special part? But it's all the same. Um, I was able to find the the oil filter, and of course, you know, you get diesel oil. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Diesel, like like the oil filter, did you have to go to like a specialty store for that, or how did no, you No, I just ordered that? it online, and they were here in the United States. Wow, dude, unreal. Now, are there like a bunch of these in the U.S.? What's the community like for the JDM Lane? Like? I was a little surprised that there were so many. Um, I guess it's all relative, but you know, I had, uh, there was a Land Cruiser swap meet recently near Golden, and I went down to it last, this last year, and I saw maybe three or four others. Okay. None of them in this good of condition. So I did have a crowd around mine. Yeah. Um, but some of them, you know, the, the more rare option is the five speed manual, which these did come with, um, just like the 100 series that can now be imported into the United States. Yeah, interesting. So when you're looking at values, I know you mentioned at the beginning that you're looking to sell this vehicle. Yes. Are they, I mean, if you were to put a price on this vehicle, what do you think it's worth? I think this one's worth around 35,000. Okay. 
Um, just based on you know all the things that have been done to it and how it's been restored, you just don't find them in this good of condition. Which when you think about it, right, 35K will get you like a very base model Wrangler, a right. very base model Bronco, or a Land Cruiser with a diesel engine and two locking discs <laughs> and a fridge in it. So um, yeah, it's more expensive than some of the US spec ones, but when you consider what you're getting. Now, mileage wise, I saw like 315, it's probably kilometers. Kilometers, right? Correct. So about 195,000 on the body. And I bet a lot of folks are less worried about that on a Land Cruiser. Correct. Yeah, than a lot of other vehicles. Yeah. It People averages about, I guess, around 6,500 uh, miles a year. What was the so. hardest part about importing it? You want to know a funny story about how I imported yeah, this one? Yeah. Okay, so um, when I first got it into the port, in order to get it imported, that's that's one thing. It comes over on a ship, you're right, it's called a row row. They roll it on, roll it off. And then once you get it here, it sits at a port. So you have to have somebody with a special license to a trucker to mm -hmm. pick it up, they have to bid on it, and then they get it, and then they want to bring it to you, point A to point B. Um, when I, I waited for about three weeks and then I finally found someone to get it, yeah. and they were like, uh, we'll bring it to you, here's the price, okay? Uh, it was about $1,400. Okay. Um, but I had to pay fees because it had been there for over a week. Oh. And the thing about this port in Los Angeles is that you have to have the fees in cash. Yeah. And so I was gonna have to reimburse the trucker. Fine, I told him it was fine, we worked out a deal. Um, he gets here, he was supposed to be here uh, at my house actually around, I think it was like 5 p.m. So I, I got off work a little early, got home. Uh, he shows up around 11 p.m. Um, does not speak English, he's from Ukraine, so yep. it's very difficult communication, and he brought the wrong Land Cruiser. Oh, there no. were only two Land Cruisers in the entire port, and he brought the one that it was not. Unreal. Uh, so long story short, they did end up finding uh, you know, got, they set it straight. The port set it straight. They waived the fees. The poor truck driver, I, I assume, got reimbursed uh, for the, their mistake. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it was a process. How long was the shipping time from when you decided that this was the vehicle you wanted and you bought it to arriving at the port? So, arriving at the port from Japan, it took about three weeks. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I think most of the time it's just waiting for the ship and for them to get it on. And a lot of times they have to sit and wait until it fills up. Right, yeah, yeah that makes sense. All right, well, let's do this. Um, Logan, if you don't mind, I'll hop into the passenger side and then let's take it uh, just up and down this road here. I wanna right. see what this is like. Sounds good. All right, so Logan, you mentioned, before we get going here, you mentioned that um, this car actually came with like some treats. Yes, so Pacific Coast Auto likes to send some treats every time that you buy a car. <laughs> um, this one is called Milky. I'm not sure what that translates from and I, I'm gonna, it's gonna go with whoever buys it. I'm not really a sweets kind of guy with that stuff. So. Dude, that's so funny. Um, all right, let's see what this thing drives like. Yeah, we'll just take sure. it down. If you wanna back up, yeah, we'll just head down that road. Or like the factory backup. Back that way? Uh, no, oh, we're gonna go, okay. yeah, down the hiller. I like the factory backup beeper. Yeah, and that's only on the inside. I think it's to remind you that you're in reverse, <laughs> which is silly. So, you've done this before with the 90 series. Yes. Um, do you like the 80 series more, or do you like the Prado more? I like the 80 series more. Um, yeah. it, it feels a lot more like a uh, truck, you know, okay. just a bigger, more powerful vehicle. Yeah, right on. Now, um, being that you have a Colorado title, I imagine that it's going to be a, um, a fairly simple thing to transfer ownership, right? Because yes. this thing has been fully legally imported. Correct. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that's the, the, the visor likes to fall, just so you know. No, that's so good. Um, the nice thing about these vehicles is they're such a good mix of kind of old school, rugged four wheel drive, um, but they're also pretty comfortable, right? Yes. Very spacious on the inside. Um, and if someone were to buy this with the, that, that front of your locker and the center locker, I mean, this thing will go pretty much anywhere you point it. It'll go anywhere with the factory winch. If you do get in trouble, you can just you winch, just winch yourself, yourself out. out. Have you been dailying this? This has been like a vehicle you've been... I wouldn't say daily, but um, I do, you know, go get groceries. I'm trying to keep it nice. Yeah, so I haven't right? off-roaded it or anything, but uh, yeah, I've driven it to work. I drive it around town um, where I'm from, so... It's yeah. pretty comfy too. It, it really is. You know, the ride quality is super soft. We can go um, straight. Yeah, we'll, we'll go straight and then we'll make a little U-turn okay. and come back. So I actually, um, I took a, one of my friends, shout out to my friend Phil. Yeah. Um, I took one of, we went to a, a Denver Nuggets game and he owns a 2022 uh, LX460. Oh, nice. Lexus. Yeah, yeah. And he commented on how smooth this one is and it compares to his, which I... I was kind of surprised. It's really cool. I'm amazed by how quiet that diesel engine is. It really is. I mean, th these are so w well sealed. Mm -hmm. um, Toyota, you know, 
dust doesn't get in, anything like that. And so I think that that's a lot of it. And I'm not really sure if when they did the restoration there in, to in uh, Japan at Toyota, I'm not really sure if they added any padding, but it rides like a dream. It's very smooth. You can just spin around here and we'll go back up the, back up okay. the road. The cool thing too is, um, I mean, especially being up here at elevation, even if you got an FZG80, they're not super high performance with the straight six. And being that you have, you know, turbocharging on this vehicle, uh, it's really, really nice, I bet, when you go up into the mountains. Yeah, it really is. It holds its speed really well. Um, it rarely has to drop a gear. And yeah, the turbocharger, like you said, at elevation, that was one of the concerns. I thought about importing one of the 70 series, mm -hmm. uh, but those are not turbocharged. Okay. And at this elevation, there can be a little bit of lack of power. Right, right, right. Um, so are you gonna do another one? That's my plan. Yeah. So um, eventually I would like to turn this into a business Yeah. and be able to import things from Land Cruisers to, um, MR2s, uh, I might dab, dabble into a little bit of uh, the Honda market with maybe some CRXs, things yeah. like that. And Logan, if someone wants to purchase this Land Cruiser, what I can do is I'll include um, some links in the description below and, and even in a pinned comment and they can get a hold of you. This sounds great, Be I appreciate that. Yeah, because I've never I've never seen one in this kind of condition. You know, I, like occasionally you'll see some of the imported stuff around, but oftentimes it's pretty worn out or it's uh, it's being used for mail delivery. You see a lot of mail <laughs> delivery like Prados around here. Uh, but to see one that's been so well cared for is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, Thank really, you. really cool. Sun report? Can you try this one? Yes, it does. Oh, wow, dude. That is it's a little slow rad. in the cold, but it still works. Unreal. Dude, this thing is one of the cooler vehicles I think we featured on the channel. Very, very cool. Are you going to miss it when you sell it? Yes. Yeah, I bet you will. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'll ever find one in this condition again. Do people know what it is when you drive it around? Or do yeah, people just think it's a normal Land Cruiser? I think a lot of times, initially, they just kind of see it. And, and until they see me on this side of the road, or of this side of the uh, car. Yeah. Then they do the double take, and uh, I get a lot of thumbs up. I get a lot of uh, attention. It really does, especially for how nice it is. I actually had a, a delivery guy that was in my neighborhood, not for me, stop when he saw me outside, and we had, you know, Toyota guys, car guys. We had a good conversation Very for cool. 20 minutes or so. So. Very cool. Well, Logan, thanks for bringing this by. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. this. It's been a ton of fun. And guys, like I said, check out the links below um, if you want a super unique Land Cruiser that you just don't see anymore. 